fellow Americans, I have spoken to you from this historic office on many occasions and about many things. The power of the presidency is often thought to reside within this Oval Office. Yet it doesn't rest here. It rests in you, the American people, and in your trust. Your trust is what gives a president his powers of leadership and his personal strength. And it's what I want to talk to you about this evening. For the past three months, I've been silent on the revelations about Iran. And you must have been thinking, well, why doesn't he tell us what's happening? Why doesn't he just speak to us as he has in the past when we face troubles or tragedies? Others of you, I guess, were thinking, what's he doing hiding out in the White House? Well, the reason I haven't spoken to you before now is this. You deserve the truth. And as frustrating as the waiting has been, I felt it was improper to come to you with sketchy reports or possibly even erroneous statements, which would then have to be corrected, creating even more doubt and confusion. There's been enough of that. I've paid a price for my silence in terms of your trust and confidence, but I've had to wait, as you have, for the complete story. That's why I appointed Ambassador David Abshire as my special counselor to help get out the thousands of documents to the various investigations. And I appointed a special review board, the Tower Board, which took on the chore of pulling the truth together from me and getting to the bottom of things. It has now issued its findings. I'm often accused of being an optimist, and it's true. I had to hunt pretty hard to find any good news in the board's report. As you know, it's well stocked with criticisms, which I'll discuss in a moment. But I was very relieved to read this sentence. The board is convinced that the president does indeed want the full story to be told. And that will continue to be my pledge to you as the other investigations go forward. I want to thank the members of the panel, former John, Senator John Tower, former Secretary of State Edmund Muskie, and former National Security Advisor Brent Scowcroft. They have done the nation, as well as me personally, a great service by submitting a report of such integrity and depth. They have my genuine and enduring gratitude. I've studied the board's report. Its findings are honest, convincing, and highly critical, and I accept them. And tonight, I want to share with you my thoughts on these findings and report to you on the actions I'm taking to implement the board's recommendations. First, let me say I take full responsibility for my own actions and for those of my administration. As angry as I may be about activities undertaken without my knowledge, I am still accountable for those activities. As disappointed as I may be in some who serve me, I am still the one who must answer to the American people for this behavior. And as personally distasteful as I find secret bank accounts and diverted funds, as the Navy would say, this happened on my watch. Let's start with the part that is the most controversial. A few months ago, I told the American people I did not trade arms for hostages. My heart and my best intentions still tell me that's true, but the facts and the evidence tell me it is not. As the Tower Board reported, what began as a strategic opening to Iran deteriorated in its implementation into trading arms for hostages. This runs counter to my own beliefs, to administration policy, and to the original strategy we had in mind. There are reasons why it happened, but no excuses. It was a mistake. I undertook the original Iran initiative in order to develop relations with those who might assume leadership in a post-Khomeini government. It's clear from the board's report, however, that I let my personal concern for the hostages spill over into the geopolitical strategy of reaching out to Iran. I asked so many questions about the hostages' welfare, but I didn't ask enough about the specifics of the total Iran plan. Let me say to the hostage families, we have not given up. We never will. And I promise you we'll use every legitimate means to free your loved ones from captivity. But I must also caution that those Americans who freely remain in such dangerous areas must know that they're responsible for their own safety. Now, another major aspect of the board's finding regards the transfer of funds to the Nicaraguan Contras. The Tower Board wasn't able to find out what happened to this money. So the facts here will be left to the continuing investigation of the court-appointed independent counsel and the two congressional investigating committees. I'm confident the truth will come out about this matter as well. 
As I told the Tower Board, I didn't know about any diversion of funds to the conference, but as president, I cannot escape responsibility. Much has been said about my management style, a style that's worked successfully for me during eight years as governor of California and for most of my presidency. The way I work is to identify the problem, find the right individuals to do the job, and then let them go to it. I found this invariably brings out the best in people. They seem to rise to their full capability, and in the long run, you get more done. When it came to managing the NSC staff, let's face it, my style didn't match its previous track record. I've already begun correcting this. As a start, yesterday I met with the entire professional staff of the National Security Council. I defined for them the values I want to guide the national security policies of this country. I told them that I wanted a policy that was as justifiable and understandable in public as it was in secret.